but mostly right now we're into a lot of the nylons and man-made fibers. It seems they usually choose nylon because it's, all, in a sense, it's almost a throwaway carpet. After it's soiled, they may wash it once or twice, and then they just discard it and put new carpet on. <laughs> well, <laughs> most of the time, it's almost dead, but it's not quite. So everything we do is basically custom dyed. We don't stock any yarns of any colors in the house. So whenever a client comes in, everything is made especially for them. It's not hard for them. And this is only uh, just a small portion of it. The what, what is this for? Phoenix Airport. This oh, is a border oh, portion. Each line going up to the repeat. Excuse me, what's it? It's almost like an item in a type card. It's almost it's like the predecessor of computer. It's a card about so 18 inches, and he reads this, and holes are punched in it where you want the yarn to come up, so that when it gets onto the loom, if it's on the jack or the wheel, the yarn it tells the loom which yarns to pull up to form the pile of the carpet. Is there most commercial carpets in Wilton? Wilton uh, because they're tougher. Or? Yes, the Wilton will hold up a lot longer. It's, the, the more expensive one. Those but, are continuous threads? Then. Yes. Tuft of carpeting, where this is orange and this is white. They're two different colors. Under every orange, you're going to have a white tuft. So if you have a five frame job, mm -hmm. it makes for the best constructed carpet that you can produce because of that. And Axminster is a different type where it'll take one tuft of carpet. It'll take it from one loop to the next, which is called a tuft. And then he'll have to actually just place these two per line. And the reason for that is instead of the repeat going singly across, it actually reads up and down like this. The loom actually reads up and down. And under here is where he places his part. After he gets it all set up, then he punches it by hand, and then it goes. Now, the thing is, he has to do this for a whole repeat. So if you get into a very complicated design that's five frames and five colors, and it's not just um, an 18 inch by 18 inch, this looks like repeat, but it's a six foot repeat. And now he's got to make cards that are going to design, match that same repeat all the way across. So he has to make up one full set, and one set being out in the loom, that repeat set. If it's Six inches, well, the minimum is nine, but it goes across the width of the loom. And you'll see the cards will keep going based on how wide that loom is so that the pattern will continue on. Each blank that he has to make up the repeat, and he'll run the repeat that he needs on the blank cards. Then those will be placed on top of the, the loom. What's this called? A repeater is what I call it. I really don't know. What's the date of this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just say the date of it. Does it have a date oh. on it? Take a picture. You don't have your camera out. You take a picture. And that's the only time that it's not a full frame is when it's a plain in color. And you'll be able to see on the back of the loom what I mean by that, of where it's placed on the creel. What is the next step in technology? Would that be using an actual Anybody. You could sit in there and you can punch it and play with it and have a good time with it. Come up with a design, blow it up, shorten it, do whatever you want, add a color. You guys can see it. right. And then they can re-hold it. Okay, would my group like to come out and make it turn and do its thing? The wires are actually more valuable than the parts are. The designs are more invaluable to us because the design is the time, right? We can always go back and we can always put the repeater parts in and do what we have to. Try to simulate the Dobby attachment. If you're familiar with that, the Dobby. Well, it's actually a simulation of a Wilton. The only thing is, it's limited in design and pattern capability. But with the airline carpeting wanting to be a very cheap product and they want everything as low as possible. That's why we as much appreciate having you come here as you do probably looking at the history of the building and the equipment and things that interest you. We appreciate it because we're proud of what we do. And it is not actually seeing what you would normally see on a loom here, because this is a sample loom. So we'll take your ends of yarns that are different colors, we'll tie it onto the tube that's already there, and then it would run through. But normally, this is a three-frame job. A three-frame machine. such a way
way where they can plant a separate color in there, then in that group that should have all been blue, then they'll have a tube of red here, a tube of red there, a tube of red up there. And it's actually placed where it needs to be placed to come out on the carpet. So you know it doesn't run all the way through, but it gives us the capability to give some more design to it than what, and color to it than what they really are looking for. There's weights that are over here, and the weights are, give it the tension, the proper tension to go into the room. Because you're going to have tension coming this way from the backing yarns and also from your face yarns. So they're going to be pulled in, and the tensions with your face yarn are held as it is just to get one of these beams made. It's three operations just to get one little beam made. And this all gets fed into the loom as we go to the front. If we could please. Is this just yes. set up for a demonstration? No, actually it isn't. I want to. Do. Yeah, it's a long process because after it comes through the back of the loom, now it has to come through the front. Everything has to come through the front. This here is a five frame. Five full frames. You're going to have those other four colors coming through. What has to happen is each one of these going back. There's a hold. There's a little hole in this heddle. They call this a heddle when I'm holding. Find a front one here, and everything has to be needled into that. It isn't set up right now because we've just finished the sample here. Seven inch loom. He only needs two of them to get the pattern that was on here. You get onto a 12 foot loom or a 9 foot loom and you have these jackets going all across it because that kettle, that uh, punch is going to tell which kettle to pick up, which is going to tell which color yarn to pick up. Okay? It gets threaded through here. You can see on the sides how it gets threaded into the same thing, your yarns with your stuffer with your chain. And when you see it, I'm sorry. What do you mean by the pitch? What are the numbers mean? Tucks per inch with your pit. The two things together tell you.